theft at the Gardner Museum really formed a spectacular backdrop for this book. It was more fun than I can tell you to dig down into the old police reports and the old newspaper reports and talk to some of the people involved. That was, that was an enormous um, amount of fun for me. I moved to Boston in 1996 and I had never heard of the Isabel Stewart Gardner Museum. It really is, uh, it's an amazing place. Um, it's the only museum uh, of its kind. It's basically the, the vision, the embodiment of the vision of a single individual. Um, and the building was designed to, uh, to fulfill that vision. It's, it's a Venetian palazzo that's sort of turned in on itself. And the entire thing was, was built and designed by Isabella Stewart Gardner. She herself um, chose each and every piece of artwork in the museum and placed it herself. So it was, it was really in some sense the, uh, the, mu the museum itself that, that first sparked my curiosity and imagination. And then the story behind the robbery um, just makes for such a great backdrop to a thriller that it was hard to resist. The robbery took place in 1990 on St. Patrick's Day, which for anybody who has not been in Boston on St. Patrick's Day is mayhem. Two men dressed as Boston police officers rang the bell at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum and uh, indicated that a disturbance had been reported on the ground. The guards, who were actually uh, students at the Berklee College of Music, let them in and the robbers overcame the guards and tied them up and they spent the next hour and a half in the museum. When they were done, they walked away with close to half a billion dollars worth of art. It's literally the largest art theft in the history of the world. And it has never been solved, and the paintings have never been found. One of the great mysteries behind the robbery is, uh, involves what was taken and what was not taken. There were several paintings that were taken that were fabulously valuable. Vermeer's The Concert is um, one of the most valuable paintings that was in North America at the time. Rembrandt's The Storm on the Sea of Galilee, again, a very important painting, and another Rembrandt as well. There were also, uh, there was a Monet that was taken, there was a Flink that was taken, so there was there was an enormous amount of artwork that was taken that did make sense because it was exceptionally valuable and it's the exact sort of thing that art thieves would be after. By contrast, though, there were a number of works that were taken that really didn't make any sense. For example, there were a number of Degas sketches um, that were unfinished and when you look at them are not the sort of sketches that really likely uh, would have inspired any sort of sentimental value. There was a beaker from the Shang dynasty uh, strangely enough, and probably the most odd thing that was taken, was, the, was an iron eagle that was the finial for a flag from the armies of Napoleon. A similar iron eagle uh, finial was recently sold online for just in the hundreds of dollars. In addition, there is a significant mystery about what was not taken. Just upstairs from the paintings that were taken was Titian's Rape of Europa, which was probably at the time the most valuable Renaissance painting in the United States. No one has been able to explain why there was this difference between what was, what, was, what was targeted and what was not targeted. All of this forms the backdrop for my fourth novel, uh, which is called Among Thieves. And the real challenge to this book was making the story historically plausible, but at the same time keeping it compelling and, and making it truly thrilling. And that turned out to be a really fun challenge for me, and the trick to me in the end was really remembering that this is a character-driven book. The robbery forms the background, but ultimately it's the characters and it's what the characters are going through that really drives the reader's interest, and that was, was the way that I focused on it, and hopefully what will draw readers in. As the story opens, Liam Kilbranish, a man trained by the Irish Republican Army, has come back to Boston. He was involved in the theft and he is driven to find the paintings again so that he can rearm the IRA to restart the troubles so that he can avenge the deaths of his family, which he witnessed when he was young. 
the main protagonist of the story is Scott Finn, who's a lawyer in Boston, and he gets dragged into this plot based on the fact that he is representing Devin Malley, uh, a man from his past, who is in prison for a different robbery. For this book, though, really my favorite character was a new character named Sally Malley. She is a 14-year-old girl who has been abandoned by her mother and her father, uh, who is Finn's client, is in prison. So Finn ends up having to take care of her, and she is really one of the most hard-edged characters you could ever imagine. And writing her um, was really one of the more enjoyable experiences I've had as a writer. I think when I found her emotional center, I really found a lot of what about the book was going to drive the suspense. Ultimately, when it came down to the writing, the characters really, again, drove the book. And it's my hope that people will enjoy reading it as much as I loved writing it.